What's up everybody? Dustin here from Solo Travel Blog. If you want your STB questions answered, you've come to the right place. So today I'm going to answer some subscriber questions and you're probably wondering, why am I wearing sunglasses? Well, truth be told, I want to be styling to the motherfucking max when I answer your buck wild questions. So here we go. First question is from Hydrogen Williams. He's got a sweet ass duck pic for his profile here. How often or do you at all talk with relatives and friends back in the US? Well, that's a pretty heartwarming question. Almost brings a tear to my eye. If you want to know the truth, I talk to my mom and dad every weekend, but as far as everyone else, not too much. Maybe the occasional Facebook message. What can I say? I'm a busy guy. I'm working my ass off 24-7. I'm sweating my balls off over here. We got a lot of ins and a lot of outs, and sometimes these relationships fall by the wayside. So next set of questions is from Karuna24. He's got a whole bunch of questions. First up, why Asia? Was it the prospect of a new job or the women or the atmosphere? Well, first of all, I think Asia is the most mystical continent in the world. Got all kinds of crazy ass ancient cultures popping off. Next up, I think that Asia is the most diverse continent in the world. I mean, you've got Buddhist areas, you've got Hindu areas, you've got Christian areas, and you've got Muslim areas. Not to mention a whole lot of other religions. Shit's getting crazy around here. And basically, long story short, I just think Asia's the most buck wild continent of them all. I think I could travel to some other continents at some point, but uh, Asia's got a whole lot of shit to, to check out, so I think I'm going to stay around here for a while. Karuna also asked, what made you decide to show your face again? Yeah, I went through a phase where I took the videos down, with which had my face. Because I was afraid that people would find out and shit, but now I just don't care anymore. Do you prefer Japan over any other country? Uh, basically, it's one of the best ones. I actually have a rating system, which I should probably talk about sometime. But Japan is a 10 on my rating system. The only other country I've been to that's a 10 on my rating system is uh, New Zealand. So New Zealand I actually like slightly better than Japan, but both places are pretty fucking awesome in my book. What are your feelings on the US? Do you miss it or do you just miss the people in your life that live there? Actually the US is awesome. I enjoy going to the US and I just went to LA recently to visit the Game Grumps. That was fucking amazing. I had never really been in California before, except when I was really young. I was actually like a baby in Hawaii and California. Just don't really remember it. So LA was awesome. I think there's a lot of different cultures in America as far as differences between states and regions that, um, that are awesome. Like there's a lot to see and do in America. America's cool, but when you grow up there, I think it's demystified, you kind of understand everything to an extent. Whereas when you go to a, a continent like Asia, it's so wild you don't even really understand what's going on half the time. And to me, that's fucking awesome. I like um, discovering new things and just, yeah, totally. Getting immersed in new cultures and all that jazz. Do you feel an inspiration to people or just a buck wild dude with stories to share. Do I feel I'm an inspiration? Uh, I guess some people are inspired. Some people have decided to teach English just based on my channel. Um, I hope I'm an inspiration actually this channel like I have a persona which is basically based on my real personality. It's essentially an exaggerated version of my real personality. Um, so it is an entertainment channel, but I do hope that people actually realize that there's a lot of cool shit to see in the world. And um, I hope you get a chance to go to Asia or Japan, or I mean, obviously Japan is in Asia, but I do most of my videos on Japan, but there's so much to see in Asia in general. So do they celebrate Valentine's Day over there? Yeah, they do. They've got Valentine's Day and White Day. 
Valentine's Day comes first. It's in February. The woman gets the man something. White Day comes like the 14th of March. Uh, the man's supposed to get the woman something. It should be of higher value. It's the same thing in Japan and Korea. They got like, I don't even know why it's rigged that way. Because I feel like you could just be a man and game the system. Get a gift on February, dump the chick, and then you're home free, baby, right? Everyone's going to think that's fucked up. It's just a joke, obviously. But um, I don't even know why they do that. I guess they get two, two holidays for one, more spending. I don't know. In Korea, they also have Black Day, which I think comes in April 14th. And that's the day where if you didn't have a girlfriend or boyfriend on Valentine's Day or White Day, then you're supposed to go to a Chinese restaurant and eat black noodles, also known as jajangmyeon. And you're supposed to find another single person there. It's like a minor, it's an unofficial holiday that people just talk about semi-jokingly. But actually they do have, in Korea, they have Valentine's Day, White Day, and Black Day. Seems like some kind of Eastern thing. Ray asked, what kind of research did you do in nutrition exactly? I used to be a researcher. I worked at a fat research center as part of Brown University in Rhode Island, where I'm from. Um, pretty much studied successful weight losers. What were the habits of people that had previously been overweight and successfully lost weight? I don't really know what to say about it. I mean, I don't take much stock into research these days. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if it's in a hard science, I take stock into it. But as far as the soft sciences, you can prove almost any conclusion you want. Um, the main thing is, yeah, it was the eating habits of people who had successfully lost weight. I also did research for brain activities of people who were normal weight, overweight, and successful weight losers. So we basically jammed people into this fMRI machine, which scanned your brain. And you can see the various parts of people's brains, what part is activated if you put a lollipop in their in their mouth when they're in the fMRI. And yeah, just all this shit with, with uh, nutrition. I mean, it's not even that exciting. I did stuff in New Zealand as well with the research for nutrition. It is what it is, baby cakes. Uh, Grinning Studios asks, are you planning on staying in Japan? I'd be pretty sad if we couldn't hang out and make a video. Uh, yeah, I'm probably staying in Japan. I, I'm planning on just basically being based in Japan and overall continually expanding my circle outside of Japan. I'm gonna start doing some more trips across the pond to places like Hong Kong, Vietnam, or South Korea. I might work my way up to the point where I'm traveling full time but um, I think I'll always continually come back to Japan because to me, Japan is like the, the center of, of one of the most buck wild concentrations of shit, you know? There's just so much crazy shit in Japan. India is a close arrival. I think I'd spend a lot of time in India as well because even though I was already there for almost three months, India is like a, a treasure trove of crazy shit. All right, next question is from Lola G. What accent do you have? I mean, to me, that, that's actually somewhat triggering. I feel like that's a microaggression against me because to merely suggest that I have an accent, I find extremely offensive. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is the absence of an accent, right? I don't know. The, the accent, I'm from Rhode Island, so... This is not a Rhode Island accent. A Rhode Island accent is pretty much like a classic Massachusetts, Boston accent. I don't have that accent. My parents were not from Rhode Island, so I never picked that up. Um, I think it was from living in New Zealand first. When I lived in New Zealand, my American accent became exaggerated because everyone thought it was so cool that I spoke with this like kind of gruff American accent. I don't even know, but they thought it was so cool. So I, it kind of like unconsciously made me exaggerate my accent. And then when I left New Zealand, I felt like um, I, had, I had some elements of the New Zealand accent in my accent, which sometimes 
picks up depending on the day. Right now it's not in my accent at all, but certain vowel sounds sometimes come into my accents, I think. Just not right now. Um, and then just living abroad, teaching English. If you're teaching English and you just speak normally, sometimes people don't understand you. You have to speak really slowly and clearly like, hello everyone, how are you today? And you, you speak like you really have to speak slowly and anyway, I think maybe that, that affects my speaking as well. I'm spending most of my time speaking to people who don't, who don't speak English as a native language. So, you know, when I go back to America, there's things that people say that I forget or like certain sayings and things. So I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I guess I have an accent apparently. Next, Tycho Drumroll asks, how old are you? Well, recently I hit the big 3-1, baby cakes. Getting up there. Getting pretty old in this mother. No, I don't really feel old at all. Um, Hunter Strupp, what is your current job? I'm an English teacher, baby cakes. What else we got here? Next, The Lion asks, what's the most buck wild story you could think of from your travels? Well, it's difficult to say. I mean, I've been a lot of places, a lot of weird shit happened to me. I don't really know. I think to me, what's the most buck wild thing is not necessarily a story. It's weird feelings I get from time to time when I was on my travels. Weird, undescribable feelings that permeated deep inside my soul. I mean, for example, one time I cruised on over to the westernmost part of India through the desert sands of Rajasthan. I boosted on over to a city called Jaisalmer. Pretty much they got a huge ass castle chillaxing in the center of the city. And you can actually stay in some hostels or hotels inside the castle. So I cruised on over to this sweet ass hostel that costed four dollars a night. Pretty much it was in this like old style semi mansion building. I mean, basically this town was near the border of Pakistan and it used to be some kind of trade route in ancient times. So the city got pretty rich and they had a whole bunch of these old style buildings popping off left and right. Pretty much I was staying in this $4 a night mini mansion. And basically uh, it was pretty buck wild. I didn't know much of what was going on, but I liked the city. It had a nice vibe. So I was spending a lot of time meeting the locals, chillaxing, chopping up game. So I met this dude who was supposed to be the top dog of the whole city. And pretty much he had this like hotel. It was the best hotel in the city. Obviously inside the castle walls, on the castle turrets, on the ramparts itself. He took me up to the city view from the ramparts. He had a bunch of tables with uh, candles lit there with a whole bunch of his customers eating, just spending money like crazy. And we were overlooking the city and he was just pointing out different places to me, telling me the history of the city. The sun was going down and there was this like weird music blasting from the city itself. I didn't know exactly what was going on, but it sounded like some sweet ass music. And I was getting in the mood and feeling the motherfucking groove. Now right about now with all those drums blasting off in the town below and the glimmering of the dying light reflecting off the desert sands in the distance, I could see a procession of sorts. A whole pack of pigeons started cruising out one of the many mansions. They started flying through the air in a dizzying array. I started to feel a tad mesmerized, although I couldn't say exactly how or why. Suddenly I realized that the pigeons themselves were flying into a figure eight. Hundreds, I would say even thousands of pigeons flying in a figure eight. I couldn't quite believe it, although at that moment I felt the infinite nature of the world. And I gotta say, although it might not sound like a buck wild story, it hit home. I guess what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way was that was a pretty nice experience, a life changing experience. My paradigms were shifted, and right about now, I'm feeling frisky beyond belief. Anyway, that's just one story. It's not so much a story as it is a feeling that I'm trying to portray to you. The feeling that touched my heart. 
Next up, Scott Cheong says, I don't remember, but how did you end up in Japan from China? I would like to travel to China one day. I traveled to China because when I lived in New Zealand, people told me about how buck wild it was. And fast forward to the future, I was living in Korea, and why did I go to Japan? Because one of my best friends moved to Japan, and previously I didn't want to travel to Japan because it was not a cost-effective place. I mean, if you spend two weeks in Japan, I thought you could spend almost two months in another country like Cambodia, so... It was not cost effective, um, but my friend moved there, so that gave me a reason to go there. That's why I went, and I really liked it a lot. Now, of course, Japan's yen is down, so that whole story about it being not cost effective is not so relevant anymore. Next, Weedster asks, have you experienced many worms or any disgusting things of the sort in your sushi adventures? No, they don't have worms here, Daug. I mean, maybe it's possible somewhere, but this is Japan we're talking about here. They don't fuck around with that shit. I mean, this is the land where people eat raw eggs every day. They eat fermented soybeans. Hell, I even had raw chicken here. So if they eat that stuff and survive, you best believe they don't have worms in their sushi, baby. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it exists somewhere, but I, I've never heard of it or seen it anywhere. Charlie H. asks... Why, sir, be your volume so low? I enjoy thine buckwild commentary and storytelling, but it will be so whispered that I fail to get the popped-off backstory in this mother. I don't know. I got some people tell me I'm too loud, and other people tell me I'm too quiet. The hell's going on around here? I think that was a racist question right there, so I want to move on to the next question. All right, it's getting a little dark in here, so I got to turn the light on in this mother. Next up, Dom W. asks, On your thoughts on the convenience store, why don't you do a robbery? That would be buck wild as fuck, and if you book a flight for the same day, I'm sure you'd be fine. It's a pretty awesome idea, Dom. You changed my life, and you touched my heart. Alright, what else we got here? Hunter Straup says, What's your all-time favorite movie? Why is it your favorite movie? Also, what Buckwild Cafe in Japan was your favorite? Um, favorite movie? I was just thinking about that today. I changed my, my favorite movie with the seasons, but I'd say one of my favorite movies of all time is Full Metal Jacket by Stanley Kubrick. It's a pretty awesome movie. It's a pretty fucking Buckwild movie. You best be seeing it if you haven't seen it yet. Favorite Buckwild Cafe in Japan? I don't know. Um, what was the best? I guess the Daug Cafe was the best. What else we got here? Kai Rule says, What's your dream? My dream is to do solo travel blog full time. Sweet cheeks. Next, Alpha R Bar says, Are you left or right handed? I'm a right handed person. Next, Mark Christopher M. asks, What camera, editing, setup, software, hardware, equipment do you use? Your audio is very nice and clear. Um, right now I'm using... The, he asked this question a long time ago. Right now I'm using a Sony RX100 Mark III. That's what I use 90% of the time. I love that camera. Right now for the audio I'm using this... Uh, giant squids lavalier mic it's hooked up to a zoom h1 which is a, a field recorder i also use about 10 percent of the time i use a gopro i want to use it more but i don't know just something about the way i i record videos i think it doesn't lend itself as much as i had expected it to be but the gopro is amazing for certain situations like if I were to go hiking somewhere, or if I visit Hong Kong ever, like that would be amazing to have the GoPro there. It's really good for picking up like wide fields of view. 
that's what the that's the best thing for the GoPro. For other things, well, I do a lot of macro stuff like dogs, or I visit stores and show weird shit, or I show food. For all the macro stuff, the the Sony is much better. The GoPro is not good for macro stuff, for up close stuff. Um, yeah, I also sometimes use my Zoom H1 if I'm doing the life changing meetup videos where I talk to people before I go into the the restaurant. Then I have the Zoom H1 as this thing right here. Pretty much, I just put the uh, sounds buffer or whatever the fuck it's called over there and you just talk into that puppy it's pretty awesome actually i love that thing next grace dixon asks how old are your students are they adults well i teach all ages but basically 90 percent of my students are in high school um yeah they're awesome actually i like teaching high school a lot what else we got here you don't answer my question Marcon Luan, you don't answer my question. Do you want to come to Brazil? When will you come? Yeah, actually, I really want to go to Brazil. I've wanted to go to Brazil for a long time. But I don't think I will go anytime soon. I think if I'm going, I want to go to see all of South America. It's like all or nothing. I want shit to be cost effective, you know? So I'll probably see more of Asia first before I would go to any other continents. But I definitely do want to go to Brazil big time. Next, Arachnids Rules 12 asks, Have you tried raw beef and chicken in Japan? Yeah, I had raw beef a lot in Korea. Not in Japan, actually, but I had raw beef in Korea a lot. And that is really good. It's called yukwe. That stuff is amazing. That's like top-notch stuff right there. Korean beef is high quality. And Japanese beef is high quality. I just haven't had it raw yet. But I had the raw chicken in Japan. I would not recommend that. That's a no-go. Raw beef is good. Raw chicken is not good, in my opinion. Next up, I don't know if I'm saying this name correctly. If I say it incorrectly, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry. Michelle Morgan says... Where do you see yourself settling down if you think you'll ever settle down in one place in the future? Well, I don't really want to think of things like that. I just like to go with the flow. I lived in Korea as long as I enjoyed it, and then I decided to go to Japan because I liked Japan. I just want to go wherever I feel I should go. I want my options to be open. If I meet someone that's worth settling down for, I would certainly be open to that. Or if I went to a place, if I visited a place that was worth staying in forever, then I would also be open to that. But right now, I'm pretty happy with being able to boost on anywhere in the world on a dime. Next up, we got a person named Wong asking, Do Japanese people treat white people highly compared to their locals? Well, to me, I think that the difference is not so big. I mean, some of them might not know how to deal with foreigners. Some of them might feel a tad ill at ease being around foreigners, especially if you go out to some small town area. But for the most part, they know how to deal with with people. I think especially if you're in Tokyo, you know, they might not be able to speak the language. I mean, English, they might not be able to speak English. Usually they don't. So that could be a problem as far as a language barrier. But otherwise, I mean, they treat you well. In some cases, they treat you better. It really just depends on the situation. Definitely, people have automatic interest in you, or they'll ask you questions about where you're from and things like that. Some people are very interested in foreigners because it's like, uh, you know, they'll see things about foreigners on TV, but a lot of them don't have a chance to speak to a foreigner. It depends on the person you're dealing with, of course, but... The vast majority of them, I think, do not have a chance to deal with a foreigner, whether they be a black person, a Hispanic person, or a whitey. Next, question from Ui Ye. Can you post a video about Japanese winters? There's not much to really do about it except to say that Japan has really fucking incredible winters as far as I'm concerned. I literally walked outside today, it is winter, it is January, and I walked outside today wearing my flip-flops during the daytime. 
Uh, to me, if you live in a place where flowers survive the winter, you're living in a good place because where I'm from, flowers die in around, I don't know, September, October, flowers are dead. And basically they don't come back again until May. So Japan, I see just walking on the streets, I saw some pansies today. Some sick ass flowers popping off in this mother. You best believe they got some sweet ass winters in this damn country. Next question from Dini Tini. How did you get jobs in all those countries you lived in? Also, how are you an English teacher in Japan? Well, it might sound like a simple answer, but just do it, baby. Just go out there and fucking do it. I think anyone can do it if they put their mind to it. I mean, basically, as far as New Zealand is concerned, it's one of the few countries that an American can go to with a working holiday visa. As far as I know, you can only do it in New Zealand and Australia as an American. So in New Zealand, I got a working holiday visa. Luckily for me, I got a job in a university because I had already been doing research in nutrition in America. So I got a job in a university in New Zealand. A little bit luckily, but I mean, I already did have good experience in that, that area at that time. So as far as being an English teacher, um, there's so many countries you can go to in Asia. You just got to research each country. Each country has a different procedure. Each country requires different documents. For example, if you want to be an English teacher in Korea these days, you have to get an FBI background check, an FBI criminal background check, which could take about four months to do. Just the, the background check alone could take four months. Um, it's a fucking process. It depends on the country you go to, but the main thing that every country needs is a degree, whether it can be any degree, basically any kind of university degree. As long as you've got that, you can work in a lot of countries in Asia. And yeah, each place has a different procedure, as I said. And then it's just a matter of applying to jobs. If you want to get the edge and really get a job, you should do um, some kind of teaching English as a foreign language certification. I especially recommend the CELTA, which I think is the best. The best are the CELTA and the Trinity. Those are the best. Forget the rest. I mean, you can do anything, but definitely having anything is better than nothing, but I would say the CELTA is the best by far. Next, Flargle Bunny asks, what are zoos, malls, and pet stores like? Well, I went to a zoo. I guess it was just like any other zoo. I mean, it was a big zoo in Ueno, Tokyo. It's a pretty nice zoo, but I don't know. To me, a zoo is a zoo. You know, you got a bunch of animals caged, living in a world of shit pacing around like wild, demoralized animals possessed. Malls in Japan, uh, I don't know, to me, just like any other place. I don't like malls. Pet stores, there's a pet store in my neighborhood. It's pretty awesome. I mean, it is just like anywhere else, but I don't even know. I feel like I'm not even answering your question. I would say they're not as different than you'd think. They're, they're more similar than you'd think. One thing about malls in, in Japan, especially in Tokyo, is they're usually more tall. Like you might have a, a mall with like eight floors or something. Whereas in America, you have a mall that's like a massive two or three floor mall because they don't have a lot of space. They have to build up. So a lot of their malls or buildings in general will have like really small floors. Okay, not the malls, but... The, the floors compared to America will be quite small and you have to go up a lot of floors. That to me is the main difference. All right, next question here is from DJ Venom Step. So while in India, did you get any experiences with psychedelics or meditation slash yoga centers? Well, pretty much uh, no psychedelics, but I cruised on over to a place called Dara Masala in India which is the seat of the Tibetan government in exile. So basically the Dalai Lama's house is there. I went pretty close to his residence, like outside the Dalai Lama's house, chilling like a motherfucking villain. Yeah, I did some yoga. No, not yoga, sorry. I did some meditation classes in uh, Dara Masala. I would say, um, yeah, like I love yoga. I just didn't get around to it. 
I was kind of just busy like seeing stuff. I probably should have spent more time relaxing, but I was just going like pretty much full throttle for four months straight when I cruised on over through South Asia, not taking much of any moments to relax at all. Going pedal to the metal, baby. What else we got here? John Jacob Jingleheimer asks, you said you were pretty unprepared for traveling in Vietnam. How so? Have you been back since? Well, basically, no matter how much you research these countries, if it's your first time going to a third world, quote, third world developing country, no amount of researching will really prepare you for what you're going to experience. Just the mere the mere fact that you're entering the country alone, shit just starts to get crazy immediately. I mean, as an example, there was some weird thing when I arrived in Nepal by airplane in Kathmandu where like I was coming from Korea and I only had Korean money so I couldn't like I couldn't exchange, they didn't exchange Korean money. They only exchanged for US dollars, yen, Australian dollars. I couldn't exchange my money. So to get like, um, to get my visa on arrival, I had to pay like $20 worth, but I couldn't even give them my money. So I was like, what the hell, what am I supposed to do? So they just told me, oh, just you can go outside and like use an ATM because I had a, an ATM card to get money or withdraw, you know, then they would withdraw and convert my US bank account money into the Nepalese rupee. So I was like, oh, I thought that they were just gonna like take me down the hall, but they just like escorted me out the building and then no one really paid attention to me anymore. They basically just let me like outside and I was in the country without my passport or a visa. They didn't even care. This is how shit happens in third world countries sometimes. Like, whatever rules you're used to, it's just like a fucking Wild West showdown. So, I mean, how can you prepare for this stuff? Like, weird things happening. Fucking people don't pay attention to stoplights and all these things that I, I explained in my Vietnam video. You can't prepare for it, man. You just have to get used to it. Once you're in one of these countries, then if you go to Vietnam and then... After that, you go to some other country like Nepal, then it's not so crazy anymore. But your first one, yeah, there's just no preparing for these, these wild things. Anyway, that's all the questions that I can answer right now. So thanks a lot for asking them. Makes me feel loved a lot. Dare I say, a real fucking lot. And if you have any other questions, then feel fucking free to ask them in the comment section. Maybe I'll make another Q&A video in the future, or maybe I'll just answer all your questions in the comment section. And also, if you haven't already checked it out, then you can check out the About video that I made in the past. I'll link it in this video here. Maybe put it right there, baby cakes. Nice! We got the sweet ass fucking About video right here. Holy shit. And as always, thanks for watching this video. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think.